All right, students. Good evening, and welcome to one more session of your World of Chemistry, your Vani ma'am. Right. So basically, yesterday I asked you what, who, are, what is the percentage of grade ten, eleventh, twelfth, as well as NEET and JEE aspirants. So I have got in the community tab maximum more than sixty percent students are from NEET aspirants. So no problem, students. All are my students only. But I thought I'll be doing the organic series that is your NEET Abhyas series. So in this series. Series. I have started with the organic, and remember, I am not going to like you know pick up the questions or something. I am going to give you the tricks which will be useful for your examination. So very nice tricks will be there. Series one, series two, like that. It goes on till your exam, but not so frequently. But I'll be posting it with beautiful content. Right. Remember, students, whenever we post a video, it is not like you know. There are seventy thousand students and only few students are watching. Please try to share the students who are watching. Try to share so that others also get benefited with us. Correct students. So we are working hard for you all. Whether it is yeah, World of Chemistry or whether it is an academy, whatever it is, you are all our students. Correct, right? So we try to put in hundred percent for you all to get that perfect information. And you, I, we all wish you should come up in flying colors. So let me start with this series. Let me explain. Here in this video, I have included general organic chemistry topic number one. Second would be a surprise which is there and very important thing for your NEET examination. that is something related to your organic name reactions so please watch the video till end don't just skip scroll it because it takes hours and hours for us to make means basically we think okay if i do like this will the student be affected if i do like that will the student be uh, uh, gained or if the student gets you know some sort of help from that right so let us start off with the first topic that is your general organic chemistry the questions which i have picked up i'll be telling the trick what to remember and the question also will be given here let's start so please watch it till the end students okay right so here in this this is a general organic chemistry in this the question is something like this overall stability of free radicals so here they have given an order in the exam they may give you, give you question they may give you these questions maximum of this and ask you to arrange in the order the first important thing you need to remember is the one which has maximum resonating structure that is more stable that is a common concept correct yes so among all these there are three benzene rings so phenyl rings are the three are there so th resonating structures are more in this next comes benzyl allyl the least is vinyl so whenever you are checking free radical stability first important thing remember more number of more number of resonating structures more number of resonating structures more would be the stability St structure so here three are there so more resonance so more would be the stability this is more stable okay further mam what, what should i do further remember always remember stability depends of free radical what what if something has to be most stable what are the factors when something has to be or something is least stable or less stable least stable what is this so this is least stable this is most stable so what what factor should be there remember for something to be more stable or most stable important thing is it should have uh, the s character whatever you you should just you know it should have less s character remember suppose means it is less character is less means it is away from the nucleus suppose if it is least stable what should you remember it should have more s character that means it is very very close to the nucleus and it's the pulley the nuclear force of attraction z effective is more on that right and if it is less in s character that means what has happened the dragging capacity is less it's nothing but lower electron affinity lower electron affinity of which one of half field orbitals suppose if i take least stable here the electron affinity will be higher higher electron affinity that i have to remember means these are the factors which uh, decide the stability suppose if i take the less most uh, stable thing because of these factors this this these two important things as i said less s character and uh, uh, means it is away from the nucleus and lower electron affinity means it's away from the nucleus that's why such compounds are core 
considered as highly stable compounds done such compounds are considered as least stable compounds done so that is the reason triphenylamine or tri triphenyl methyl free radical has more resonating structures one reason it's stable this doesn't have compared to that that's why it is less stable this is fine students this is how you need to remember so this is a series this is a topic or the concept of the free radical now let us come and see the next concept very important concept in your general organic chemistry let us see the next question here basically this question is about the carbocation which they ask you so here as i said the reaction intermediates compulsory trends are asked you need to remember how to solve what do we see in the free radical we said more number of resonating structures less of the s character they are more stable let us come to this here you have a series of carbocations tertiary secondary primary methyl now among all these here we said tertiary is more stable what is the reason basically if i have to talk about this reason basically methyl or ethyl whatever alkyl groups are there no when they are linked with this positive charge methyl and ethyl what is the concept they are electron releasing groups correct no right so let us write that what is the reason here why this is stable basically more number of methyl groups so either if you have methyl or ethyl what do they do just now we said they are linked to this positive charge they start donating electrons so these are what electron donating groups okay ma'am what happens if they are electron donating group what they'll do is whichever carbocation it is linked with it will increase this stability stability of this carbonium what happens by increasing the stability already this is deficient by sending the electrons towards it the uh, what do you say the intensity of the positive charge decreases isn't it so electron donating groups what do they do they reduce they reduce the intensity intensity of positive charge intensity of positive charge the carbocation whatever positive charge is there that reduces intensity automatically it becomes more and more stable that means in the exam paper if you see more number of electron donating groups that is more 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 and more stable suppose if there are electron withdrawing groups so what happens the electron withdrawing groups are what electron withdrawing groups basically are the nitro group the electron withdrawing groups are nothing but the carbonyl group suppose if these groups are present in this particular structures what happens automatically the stability decreases so electron releasing groups are there means stability increases in this case electron withdrawing groups are there means stability decreases in this case isn't it interesting easy okay now let us see one more question so i am just pushing pulling just uh, moving my book about now check next question order of stability of carbocation here that is alkyl means aliphatic i have taken here now aromatic i am taking now again you see what do you see whenever you see more number of benzene rings that means first concept is carbocation is stabilized by resonance as, as we did in free radical so the concept which i remember is carbocation is stabilized by resonance okay it is stabilized by resonance perfect after this i know this if, after knowing this concept next let me check which has more number of resonating structures this has three benzene rings more number two benzene rings compared to that less only one benzene ring less that means whichever has more number of resonating structures it is more stable so that is the reason the order of that particular thing is given in this direction so what will we write same thing again more number of resonating structures more number of resonating structures structures more is the stability okay more is the stability this is perfect now uh, let me combine both the al aliphatic and aromatic uh, carbocation stability and let us write one concept that is nothing but overall stability of carbocation let us check that because you need to both you need to know both isn't it so overall stability together let us write one order remember so what did i say more number of resonating structures more stability so among aliphatic aromatic if i combine together so ph3 three phenyl rings carbocation this is more stable compared to ph2 plus because one phenyl ring uh, is reduced one hydrogen increases next ph ch2 
So here two hydrogens, one filling ring. That's why it is less. Here three. That's why it is more stable. Here only one less stable. Further, if I come to aliphatic CH2 double bond CH2 CH2 plus. Further, if I come because the tri or tri alkyl will be there. This keeps donating the electrons. So means compared to this, this is less stable. Compared to this, this is further. Here you can show resonance. That's why I took this. Further here resonating structures. Further I am reducing the alkyl group. Further I am reducing the alkyl group. And coming to your ethyl. Further final the least stable is methyl. Because there is no neither resonance in this case. There is no pi bond if I have to tell you. Right. That's why methyl carbocation is the least stable. Triphenyl carbocation is the most stable. Perfect students. So this is your carbocation <coughs> stability. Remember. Now let us see one more. Here if I have to see. Now next question what did I take? Let me see whether the book is under the frame of the camera. Yeah. So the next question is stability of carbanion. Carbanion from where I have derived it from? Alkyne, alkene and alkene. So basically here I am going to you need to remember. Here ma'am okay. Hydrocarbons are there. I can decide based on their hybridization. Here in this case S character is 50 percent. P is 50 percent. Here it is 3366. In this case 2575. Now, what should you remember? Always remember the correct trick or the reason is what should you remember based on hybridization? Greater the S character. Greater the S character. Yes, yes, students. Greater the S character, you're able to understand because S I took closer the or closer it is to the nucleus. It is to the Nucleus. That means Z defective is very very strong in this. Closer to the nucleus. Perfect. If it is closer to the nucleus, what will happen to the this one? Lower energy. Lower energy. Now check here. S character is fifty percent. Correct. So here this is more stable because it is very tightly packed. I can't pull it outside. I can't break it. I can't uh, divide. It means I require low this one. So here it is the lower energy mixed together and bonded together. So whichever has more S character that is considered to be more stable. So please write whenever you have your hybridization, you can take it in that way and decide. Resonance also will decide. Hybridization also will decide about its stability. Right. Let us come and see the next topic. Right students. Now let us see the next question. That is order of stability of alkyl carbanion. So here remember free radical we have seen. Carbocation we have seen. Now let us see the carbanion. So carbanions are nothing but negatively charged species isn't it? Carb anion. Right. So here they have given an order. Methyl carbanion is more stable than uh, this one. Uh, or primary uh, carb carbanion is more stable than the secondary ethyl. Then tertiary, this is your tertiary carbocation, carbanion where you have three alkyl groups. Now, how did they predict this? How can you, how should you remember? Remember, in this first case, when it is your methyl, what is happening? Compare, if I see, check first and second. So, here in the first case, in methyl carbanion, what what happened? There is only one, there are three hydrogens, correct? There are three hydrogens. When I take here in tertiary, there are Okay, this is three hydrogens. This is three alkyl group. Okay, so whenever alkyl groups are there, what is the first thing you should remember? Alkyl groups are or more alkyl groups are there, or whether it is methyl, methyl, more alkyl group. What will be happen? More electron donating nature. Electron donating nature. If it is more electron donating nature, what can I say? It shows plus I effect. Correct? No, plus I effect. Now here, when I see this lot of plus I effect is there because this also donates, this also donates, this also donates. Because of this what happens, this electron reducing nature, it will intensify this negative charge. Whatever is there, the negative charge is intensified, it means it increases so much that it destabilizes the carbanion. So what should you remember here, when there are three alkyl groups, more alkyl groups, more plus I effect. More plus I effect means more negative charge more negative charge intensifies intensifies on which one on this carbon the cloud uh, the electron density becomes more intensifies on 
carbon ion carbon ion because of this what happens because of this it destabilizes it destabilizes the thing that's why tertiary is unstable it's not stable compared to primary now when i take primary carbon ion there are only three hydrogens are you finding any inductive effect here no no there are no alkyl groups that's why there is not much appreciable inductive effect that's why it is most stable so no inductive effect that's why it is most stable most stable perfect isn't it right so we have seen for free radical stability we have seen for carbocation we have seen for carbanion correct now let us see the overall stability okay so here when you take the overall stability of your um, this in um, carbanion remember overall stability is triphenyl methyl triphenyl methyl greater than benzyl greater than allyl greater than primary greater than secondary greater than tertiary this is fine students okay now let us turn and do the next thing carbenes okay now next reaction intermediate carbenes so here in carbenes what is the order they have given this order okay methyl tertiary is given secondary is given primary is given okay ethyl is given methyl is given carbenes when i check these carbenes so basically triplet we call this triplet carbene doublet carbene in this way so what should you remember in carbenes basically if i have to check triplet carbenes are relatively more stable triplet carbenes are more stable than singlet what is the reason because what happens is when i have this triplet energy you know it has it is required to place two electrons in the same orbit correct no right so why because when i have to place that i am going to i have to place two electrons triplet no two electrons in the same orbital i need to fit and because i have to fit it and then overcome the uh, interelectronic repulsions that is why always remember triplet triplet carbenes triplet carbenes so basically what are carbenes students so normally we we, we have studied in the general organic chemistry uh, different different types of reaction intermediates so carbene is a molecule containing a neutral atom correct no with a valence of two or two or shared like basically two or unshared ele valence electron pairs correct no so here when i take carbene here in this case i said i am talking about triplet correct now here this minus if i have to just not consider because carbene means it should, you should have a yeah, pair of electrons which i said isn't it so carbenes just check don't like just simple keep this aside keep this aside now as of now just i'm just uh, taking this out and you take triplet carbenes are more stable than your singlet carbenes triplet carbenes are more stable than singlet carbene so basically when i take triplet carbene how does it look so triplet carbene means as a name suggest it is it has it has triplet and uh, singlet means as a name suggest they are just check this triplet carbene it looks like c there is one pair of electron please don't take this don't get confused i'm showing it here there is a pair of electron one here okay i need to take this because i have to fit both the electrons in this one more and hydrogen and this is hydrogen this is your triplet carbene if i have to take the singlet singlet carbene singlet carbene you have the orbitals in this so i have to place both the electrons in the same isn't it that's what i said i need to place two electrons in the same orbit correct so because of this there will be what will be there there will be inter electronic repulsions electron electron repul repulsion will be there because of this inter electronic repulsion what happens it is going to just have or less stable compared to triplet so always remember triplet car carbene is more stable than singlet carbene this is fine students okay sorry for this inconvenience now next comes your nucleophiles what are nucleophiles basically nucleophiles are electron rich species correct no so they they can call them as lewis bases also correct electrophiles are lewis acids neutrophiles neutrophiles are or nucleophiles are <coughs> lewis bases which donates electrons so what are the common nucleophiles we normally see neutral they are neutral nucleophiles correct they are pi bonded nucleophiles they are negative nucleophiles so ammonia r 
एन हेच टू राइट नेक्स्ट आर टू एन हेच डन आर थ्री एन डन दीज आर ऑल इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ना राइट वॉटर राइट the next comes alcohol these are all list of uh, nucleophiles which you will be using regular basis <laughs> right next comes cyano very strong oh minus these are all negative nucleophiles correct no x minus or minus sh minus right this is rcoo minus and then alkyne minus these are all nucleophiles which are <coughs> which act as lewis bases remember that so they are electron rich species they uh, attack the sites where there is electron deficiency now electrophiles so electrophiles are what these are electron deficient these are basically lewis acids they accept electrons always correct what are the different electrophiles which we have studied we have studied boron trifluoride aluminum chloride in free electrophiles reaction we have studied isn't it in the presence of a lewis acid we said next comes fecl3 perfect then sicl4 done then comes your so3 done then ch Oh, CH two. Yes, it can be a neutral molecule also. It can be H plus. It can be Cl plus. It can be Br plus. It can be NO plus. It can be NO two plus, and it can be RC plus double bond O. So, so many electrophiles are there in our this one, which you will be using, which are electron deficient, and I call them as Lewis acids because they keep uh, accepting electrons because they have, or if I have to take like. particular thing uh, they are electron deficient and they require electrons correct now let us see some more important points to remember in general organic chemistry after the reaction intermediates which are frequently asked so after the reaction intermediates the next thing which you have to remember the important points of the exceptions which they keep asking okay so let us discuss so here always remember you they'll be asking questions about sulfur trioxide so what is the structure of sulfur trioxide basically sulfur is in the center two oxygens above two more oxygen one more oxygen here one more oxygen here so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 here in this case if i have to take the same thing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 here also the same thing in this case okay now here what happened there are how many lone pairs 1 2 3 4 5 6 six uh if i have to just check the lone pairs and bond pairs so basically 1 2 3 4 5 6 lone pairs and there are six bond pairs 1 2 3 4 5 6 correct right so they are located in such a way that the geometry is triagonal planar triagonal planar this is a lewis structure so triagonal planar geometry is there for so3 i don't know maximum they ask the structure students depict it wrong so that's the reason remember it has six lone pairs and it has six bond pairs also right now next structure which to or very important is if7 so if7 as we know it is your pentagonal correct no i pentagonal bipyramidal geometry it has so let me write that it has pentagonal pentagonal bipyramidal geometry okay these are all exceptions basically that's why they keep asking you these only you need to remember so how does it look 7 no i is in the center right 7 are there so 1 so if i have to draw 2 i'm joining next 3 done then i'm joining 4 done then i'm joining the fifth one done so let me join all these 1 2 3 4 5 right till two uh, two more are there this is at the back of the pairing so this is your f and one more one at the front one at the back one at the back so done so this is your if7 structure which is pentagonal bipyramidal geometry remember okay one more question which they ask what is the uh, molecule or the ion which is an isoelectronic with co3 minus so normally they ask this question quite common which i have checked so remember no3 minus is in or is isoelectronic same number of electrons isoelectronic with which one with carbonate ion so both are isoelectronic they have equal number of electrons and what is the geometry they have triagonal planar geometry they have triagonal planar geometry these are all exceptions so you should remember that's why i picked up next 
they will ask you one more question. What is the uh, species which is an isoelectronic with I3 minus? So, that is nothing but interhalogen compound ICl2 minus. So, this and this are isoelectronic in nature. So, you can have it as a question. So, remember that. Next, one more. One more is the species which is in isoelectronic with XCF2. So, XCF2 the species is ICl2 minus. So, this is one more also I small i. Done. This is one more. So, these are all very important questions asked. And what do they have? They have a geometry of triagonal, triagonal bipyramidal. Triagonal bipyramidal geometry, bipyramidal geometry both have and uh, the, the geometry and the, uh, the thing which they ask and next if, if, if I take this, this thing I am talking about, if I take XCF2, it is linear in structure, no? XCF2 is linear, it is straight, X, high, X in the center, fluorine on the side, one fluorine, so this is your linear structure. So what am I trying to tell you, these are all important exceptions which they ask you, this is one exception, that is one more exception. Now let us see the important part of your organic chemistry that is nothing but a beautiful way of learning the name reactions. Let us see that. Right, students. So, as I said, name reactions, how to study. Normally, name reactions, ma'am, very difficult. So, what did I do? I have divided all the name reactions, almost, you know, 100 plus name reactions into four different tables. What is that? This is your name reaction, name of it, reactant, reagent, product. What is the advantage of this? This advantage is when you, whenever you are learning the name reaction, either if they ask you all the four, so if they ask you what is the, what is the type of the reaction form when aldol is a product. So, aldol condensation, the reactant is aldehyde and it, uh, the reagent in the presence of a base only, it is going to happen, dilute base like that. So, I have listed out almost 100 plus reactions according to the alphabetical order. So, here I have taken as a, a, a cyclone condensation, reactant is this, reagent is this product, then aldol is taken here. In the next page, in the next page, cross aldol. So, basically cross aldol you will be studying, no? Cross aldol you will be, what you will be doing? You will be doing the cross between benzaldehyde, acetaldehyde, ketone also, formaldehyde also. So, I have taken all the options. I have written what is a reagent required and what is a product. Perfect. Now, next let us see some more. Here this is one more name reaction with A. I have taken that. This is Beckman reagent reaction. Rea name of the reaction, the reactant, these are the catalysts or the reagents are, which I take. In all the cases, some are catalysts are there, some are reagents are there and this is the product. And next comes bridge reduction. Now, this is one more. Bridge reduction, Canizaro. So, this is the name of the reaction. These are the reactants, the other, these are the reagents or catalysts or solvents and this is the product. Perfect, isn't it? Yes, you can take the screenshot also and use it. Further, I have divided some more name reactions starting with C. What are they? I have taken with Claisen's uh, condensation and Claisen Sidmit reaction. Rea uh, name of the reaction, reactant, name of the solvent or the catalyst or reagent and the product formed. Perfect. Yes. Next student. Next further I have taken it. It took a lot of time for me students doing this. So Clemenson, Curtius, Friedel Crafts. So these are the reactants. These are the reagents. These are the products. So you quickly you can note it and put it and stick it to your uh, near the study table and study it off. Like that I have done for Friedel Crafts acylation reactions. See here Friedel-Crafts acylation. I did. What is the reactant? What is the reagent? What is the product? Further, I also did Finkelstein reaction, Woods reaction, Fittig reaction. All the four, if you see this, all the four are this. They may ask you, they may give you this, you need to write this. They may give you this, you need to write the solvent or reagent. That's why it is very, very important thing for you all. Right, students? So, this is from your Vani ma'am. As I said, this is your uh, NEAT series which I have started. Thank you so much. Remember, students, I have taken almost lot of time to do this this is your organic series one so this is your neat abhyas neat abhyas organic series one so here basically don't worry grade 11 students i'm there with you all i'll be doing let your seniors finish off your neat exam then i'll come back to you so organic series one in the next thing i'll be meeting again with next series so next series coming up very soon next series within a week time next series 
टू विल कम अप वेरी सून थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग वॉचिंग दिस इज योर वानी मैम साइनिंग ऑफ ऑलवेज रिमेंबर कीप स्माइलिंग आई एल मीट यू अगेन इन द नेक्स्ट सीरीज थैंक यू सो मच गॉड ब्लेस यू ऑल स्टे हैप्पी प्लीज वॉच शेयर सब्सक्राइब एंड रिमेंबर टू शेयर because world of chemistry is something which without you all it is not there i keep always saying you know world of chemistry is only because of you all so if you all share only i can upload if you are not showing interest i will also lose interest isn't it thank you so much students bye bye thank you and meet you next week thank you so this is a flow chart which i made for oxides of nitrogen everything will be covered in this you can have you know you can use it for your cbsc you can use it for your neat you can use it for your je also because basically p block chapter is that chapter where maximum questions are asked and the weightage of the chapter also is more correct so i made a flow chart which is easily understandable just check here basically simple the basic reaction is this so here n2 plus o2 this is a basic reaction now what happens when you come combine both together at 3000 degree centigrade the forward reaction gives you nitrous oxide okay okay or nitrogen monoxide and the backward reaction gives back you both n2 plus o2 further what did i further do i have made reactions further continuing with nitrous oxide into these Ni uh, further reactions continued from nitrogen to further this yeah, where both the haber's process as well as oswald's process is here right now just check here important thing is nitrous oxide when you are treating with 250 kelvin at plus you are really treating with n2o4 or nothing but no2 only you know n2o4 is nothing but no2 dimer of that so you are going to get nitrogen trioxide so just check students i'll be doing the mechanisms also in the next video inorganic reaction mechanisms will be done by me in the next video uh, please watch the next video also next further when i take no treated with oxygen i'll be getting nitrogen dioxide there are three possibilities if you are further dealing or treating with water in the liquid form you get nitric acid if you are further treating at 620 degrees the same gas if you are treating with 620 degrees it's going to dissociate into nitrous oxide and oxygen and o plus o2 it becomes no basically 2 to the 4 are there here also 2 to the 4 are there right next further if i take no2 and if i am cooling it means almost at minus 11 minus 11 degree centigrade if i cool i get at n2o4 if i heat it i'll get back the no2 so this is one way of understanding further <coughs> if i take nitrogen if i am treating at 773 kelvin okay i am including uh, three uh, uh, hydrogen means n2 plus h2 this is nothing but the haber's process isn't it here what what will we use we we'll use iron oxide as a catalyst i use potassium oxide and alumina as a promoter right students that is your haber's process which follows the leach atier principle and the temperature is 200 or the, sorry the pressure is 200 atmospheres so what happens here it's going to form ammonia okay now further ammonia you when you just add water to that it's going to means when you're dissolving ammonia in water you'll be getting ammonium cation and hydroxyl anion means this is a basic way of understanding okay further i'm going to take the same ammonia i'm introducing platinum as a catalyst and i'm adding oxygen so this is nothing but this whole thing is nothing but oswald's process so oswald's process is used to prepare nitric acid haber's process is used to prepare ammonia done yes so first when you are trying to add oxygen it's going to form nitrous oxide plus water further i'm going to take same uh, nitrous oxide and further allow it to undergo or add oxygen it's going to form nitrogen dioxide further i'm going to take the same nitrogen dioxide and add water and the oxygen you get nitric acid so this basically is a summary of the whole oxides of nitrogen which will be useful for all the reactions maximum all reactions are covered in this right now from here let us see in the continuation of this if i take further n2o3 what what are the possibilities just check i have written here just check n2o3 i have three things i i can explain you in three different forms that's so nitrogen trioxide room temperature what happens when you add water what happens when you add sodium hydroxide what happens so i have the mechanisms for everything i'll explain you in the next video right so here n2o3 when you are treating at room temperature it's going to break up into nitrous oxide and nitrogen dioxide which is a reddish brown gas 
now nitrogen dioxide further has just a when you treat with co uh, sodium hydroxide as a base when you treat it with water when you treat it this is your water okay oxygen plus water and then you'll be getting when you treat with oxygen and water you'll get nitric acid when you're treating with cold water when you're treating with hot water when you treat with cold water you'll be getting a combination of nitrous and nitric acid when you treat with hot water you'll get a com combination of nitric acid and nitric monoxide nitric oxide nitric acid nitric oxide nitrous acid nitric acid so here like this i compiled everything together in uh, a particular uh, flow chart which will be very very useful now this is your flow chart for your oxides now let us see the important reaction that is reaction suppose if they give me how to solve the different varieties of reactions so different sort of reactions are there very easy technique i'll explain you let's come and see that so let us see the reactions if they are giving you different types what are the products to write how to write let us see now let us take this page right proper now here suppose they are giving you a reaction something of this sort suppose uh, decomposition reactions okay so first let me discuss the decomposition reactions all together and then come back to you uh, with different different varieties with HNO3 so in decomposition reactions when you are taking first important thing what should you remember let me start with the basic and the most important decomposition position reaction that is with the heat okay so i'm going to decompose in the presence of with heat okay done let us check now here i'm going to take ammonium nitrate okay nh4 no3 now ma'am ammonium nitrate what is the precursor from where it is prepared just check you can prepare ammonium nitrate from just check potassium nitrate plus ammonium sulfate potassium nitrate plus ammonium sulfate now what happens just take here ammonium nitrate plus k2so4 so it comes out further you can also prepare ammonium nitrate from sodium nitrate no3 plus you take one more ammonium salt ammonium chloride see here ammonium nitrate nacl ammonium nitrate is here done now first important thing whenever you have ammonium nitrate try to remove maximum water molecules remove maximum water molecules this is the simplest logic if you have to see my maximum how many water molecules are there means higher this one is there hydrogen 4 so how many water molecules i can remove i can remove 2 h2o because here 2 2s are 4 correct no 2 2s are 4 so 2 to the 4 hydrogens have come out so how many are left now this nitrogen is left this nitrogen is left one oxygen is left so nothing but n2o gas simple that's nothing but your laughing gas laughing gas is released so the trick here is remove maximum water molecules when you see ammonium nitrate nothing to get confused so ammonium nitrate you see means you just remove okay this is one suppose if i have or if they give me one more compound let me check whether i can do it or not yes students let me see whether the lens is clear okay it's clear right now just check suppose they give me one more reaction that is with hydroxyl amine so here in the exam you're seeing decomposition of hydroxyl amine you're just checking so here what happens suppose hydroxyl amine is nh2oh now you are adding nitrous acid to this what is this nitrous acid the trick is it easily gets oxidized easily it gets oxidized easily means when oxygen is present now immediately it adds on oxygen to that so this oxygen gets added easily or gets oxidized as I said what will happen hno2 plus 1 if this becomes hno3 done the leftover is what the leftover is what this nh2 and this hydrogen this comes to nh3 now this whole thing combines together just check this whole thing combines together and what will happen it forms ammonium nitrate now check as we have said whenever you're heating ammonium nitrate only two products we get what is that product one is nitrous oxide laughing gas and the other one is water molecule two water molecules you'll get because four are there simple if i know this i'll easily do this after that both will combine they'll give me on heating they give me nitrous oxide and water that's fine students easy i'm trying to make it easier now we will see one more hydroxyl amine that's nothing but uh, hydroxyl amine hydrochloride this is also similar reaction let's check right so here 
Suppose I have in H2OH dot HCl. What is this name? Hydroxyl amine hydrogen chloride. Suppose here I am going to add NaNO2. Same thing like HNO2. It is easily oxidizable. So this oxygen is picked up by NO2. NaNO2. What do I get? When this oxygen combines, this one combines with this. This also combines with this. This also combines with this. What do I get? NH3 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 3, 3 plus 1, 4. It has become NH4Cl plus NaNO3. Now, check here. I'm sorry. Check here. Sodium chloride comes out and ammonium nitrate is out. So, same story. When ammonium nitrate is there, when you further heat it, it will break up into two different compounds. That's nothing but N2O and water. So, what should you do? Whenever you see ammonium nitrate, remove maximum water molecule. Maximum water molecule. Simple. Correct? No? Yes, students. Easy. Right? So, simple decomposition reactions. Very easy to solve. Okay. One more we will see now. Very interesting. Suppose in the exam paper, in the exam paper, okay, I have the other side. In the exam paper, if they give you any type of salts, like ammonium salts, let them give you any type. Now we saw ammonium nitrate, no? Suppose if they give you salts of ammonia. So let me take any salt of ammonia, any salt of ammonia, let them give. So ammonium salts, like for example, let them give me a salt of ammonium nitrite. Let me let them give me a salt of ammonium nitrate. No problem. Let them give me a salt of a complicated one like you know uh, Cr two O seven, Cr two O seven minus two potassium or oh, sorry dichromate. Or if I say dichromate, I remember manganate. Correct? No. Like this, right? So simple thing. Just see students. Here, whenever you are taking, whenever you are taking, just see for manganate for dichromate and for your nitrite so manganate dichromate and nitrite so only for this only for this no just check only for this you will be getting only when it is nitrate only for nitrate the product which you get is no2 nitrous oxide plus water for remaining all which one for this one for this one and for this one, all the three, the products are nitrogen gas and water. Simple. Let us see the reaction of this and understand. Suppose if I am taking <coughs> ammonium nitrate, anything we will take. So I said, let me take one example of ammonium um, nitrate. I said, it's going to dissociate. What is it going to dissociate into? It's going to dissociate into, as I said, just, just now we saw, no, nitrate always dissociates into N2O plus water on heating. This is on heating. Now, let us take the next one. Ammonium chromate. Ammonium chromate is Cr2O7 that is taken twice. When you are heating this, simple. First thing, what should you get? Ammonium chromate. What should you get? Nitrogen. Take out. After this, water. Okay, how many waters are there? 4, 2, 0, 8 are there. Hydrogens are 4, 2, 0, 8. So, I will make 4 water molecules. Okay, now check. 4 water molecules have come out. 2 nitrogens have come out. What am I left with? What am I left with? Here, oxygens how many are over? Already 4 are over. 4 oxygens are over. How many are left now? Cr2, O3. Now check. Chromium is true. 2. Oxygen is 3 plus 4, 7. Nitrogen is 2 and hydrogen is 4, 2, 0, 8. Perfect. Perfect students. Everything will be like this only. Now let us check. Let me take out my page and use the next one for you all. Right. Suppose one more decomposition reactions. One more decomposition reactions. Careful. Just see if they are giving you further. Let me check further decomposition reactions if I can do. If they give me, let me take my scale and uh, I think, okay, my scale is missing. No problem. Let me just take this reaction and check. Further ammonium nitrate we saw, ammonium chromate we saw, ammonium phosphate, sulfate, right? Uh, right. Now, if they give me a particular thing like, you know, um, ammonium 
सल्फेट फॉस्फेट कार्बोनेट इन योर हेल यू सी नो कैटिंग एनियोन्स करेक्ट सो इन द एनियोन पार्ट Uh, if I have to tell you the radicals when you check, right? So here, if I see any ammonium salt, any ammonium salt. So any ammonium salt, if I take, suppose if I am taking in the when you check your independent radicals are there, no? Independent radicals are sulfate, phosphate. So if they combine with independent radicals, what are the independent radicals? Means just like phosphate. If I take uh, your phosphate, phosphate is an independent radical. If I take one more sulfate. So four minus two. So what do I, what do they give? They compulsorily form or release ammonia. The ammonia gas is compulsory, along with the acid. Acid plus ammonia gas. Okay, let us check. Suppose if I take the same ammonium salt and if I am allowing it to combine with I means carbonate, the ammonium carbonate. What does it give? It again gives me ammonia plus acid. Suppose if I take halogens, like if I take chlorine, it also combines. Further I'll take, it will also combine to form same product. If I take bromine, same story. It also combines to give same product. Isn't it interesting, students? On halogens, fluorine, chlor, not fluorine, fluor, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So let us see these reactions. How they are going about? So iodine also the same concept. Let's see the reaction. How I said ammonia plus independent radicals plus the carbonate anion and the halogens X minus. So they're going to give me the same ammonia plus acid. Let us take suppose independent radical. So real let us write reaction of ammonia with independent radical. Okay, independent radical means what did we say? Just now we said sulfates sulfates phosphates correct now i'm going to take ammonium sulfate in ammonium sulfate sulfate valency is 2 so i'm writing so four. i'm going to take ammonium phosphate ammonium phosphate correct charge valency if i'm heating what do what do i get they said it's going to give an acid plus which gas it's going to be acid plus your ammonia gas so take out what is the acid present in this what is the acid present in this sulfuric acid what is the acid present in this phosphoric acid correct now along with this what should it come out ammonia gas should come out ammonia gas ammonia gas perfect correct now suppose if you take ammonium carbonate okay ammonium carbonate ammonia taken twice carbonate valency minus two just to mention the charges okay sulfate valency so this is three this is three okay next comes carbonate valency is two now when you heat it what is acid formed the acid which is formed is carbonic acid so we very well know carbonic acid is not stable correct okay let us write ammonia gas carbonic acid is not stable it's going to dissociate into two that is in um, h2o and carbon dioxide Correct. So it's not stable. No, that's why it's going to convert. Suppose if I take ammonium chloride when you're heating, what will happen? It's going to give ammonia gas plus HCl. Suppose if you take ammonium bromide, what do you get on heating? Ammonia gas plus HBr. Correct. No. Yes, students. Simple reactions. Only thing you need to remember this one. Yes, students, simple. Now, let us see some more reactions. Interested? Yes? Yes. So, some more reactions we will see. Further, if I take this next reaction, we will be taking again decomposition reactions of metal nitrates. So, let us see. So, decomposition reactions, decomposition reactions of metal nitrates metal nitrates so done so metal nitrates basically when i have to take what is the thing always remember whenever metal nitrates if they are heated suppose if they are heated what do you get you get metal oxide plus no2 gas plus oxygen remember this right here metal nitrates can be anything just like you know your group one group two transition metal elements not a problem suppose if we take like uh, basically let me start with the basic thing that is lithium nitrate so here lithium nitrate valency is plus one minus one you're heating it so this is your metal nitrate 
metal oxide what is a metal oxide it is Li2O because oxygen valency is minus 2 lithium is plus 1 over what will I get I will be getting a NO2 gas plus oxygen gas this is fine correct now now what are the metals which are in diagonal relationship with uh, lithium tell me magnesium nitrate calcium nitrate strontium nitrate barium lead copper zinc isn't it students correct no yes so the whatever metals or the metal nitrates those also will give the same reaction that also we will see suppose if you have lead nitrate pbno3 is here on heating what should it give same lead oxide plus no2 plus oxygen okay this i'll not write this one every time you only tell me now zinc nitrate same thing metal nitrate on heating gives me zinc oxide plus same if i take silver nitrate silver i'm sorry not this arrow silver nitrate plus one minus one on heating i get silver this is an remember this is oh least reactive metal so directly silver precipitates out and no2 plus oxygen okay done we'll take more and more reactions now i told you isn't it so the the other metal nitrates which are in diagonal relationship with lithium what is that that is nothing but magnesium nitrate nothing but calcium nitrate nothing but strontium basically all uh, you know uh, what do you say it calcium valency okay hmm. right so all uh, like you know strontium barium um, copper like that or zinc already wrote all these also are going to give metal oxide plus nitrogen dioxide gas plus oxygen gas so this is a brown color gas so nothing simply if i take magnesium nitrate okay magnesium nitrate so magnesium nitrate if i heat what happens what did i say just now magnesium nitrate is not nothing but when it decomposes to form um, um, metal oxide correct no metal oxide and nitrogen dioxide as well as what did i say it's oxygen correct so here what should you remember if you remember one important thing one important thing one important thing it's easy for you to answer so magnesium nitrate let us write magnesium nitrate valency 2 on heating forms magnesium oxide plus no2 plus oxygen simple students see how many reactions we have studied today isn't it simpler for you all simpler for you all yes so just check now let us see if you're heating azides so normally this is quite common reaction azides where we prepare the pure form of nitrogen correct now let us see preparation of pure nitrogen from azides from decomposition of azides azides okay what is the formula azide is nothing but suppose barium azide barium b a azide means nitrogen barium valency 2 azide valency 1 sodium azide n a n 3 sodium valency 1 azide valency 1 when you are heating these two first important thing nitrogen gas comes out because pure form of nitrogen you're preparing now plus how many nitrogens are there three how many nitrogens are there three twos are six three twos are six here how many three so that means uh, one more is there i have to write so that's nothing but sodium is here barium is here now three twos are six so if i write two here this also will become two it's balanced so this is the reaction or the decomposition of azides using a preparation of nitrogen pure nitrogen gas that's okay now let us see the important thing uh, reaction of nitric acid very 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 important so let us see the action of action of hno3 so basically hno3 nitric acid we have three conditions which we have to learn that is how is the reaction with very dilute nitric acid very dilute hno3 how is the reaction with dilute hno3 how is the reaction with concentrated hno3 this is the concept correct right 
Now, in this also, we are going to take both. We are going to take both metals combination for all the three and we are going to take also non-metals. Done. Metals again, you have three varieties that is least reactive metals, least reactive metals. Next would be less reactive metals. Next would be high or more reactive metals. High reactive metals or more reactive metals. Isn't it students? Done. So here in this case, we'll be taking phosphorus, sulfur, iodine, carbon like that. So, shall we see the reactions? Very interesting. Yes. So, please keep noting it and just check. Suppose you have, let us take the first one. I am taking the least reactive metal. Now, what are the least reactive metals? Basically, if I have to see, this is silver, gold, platinum, which are below the hydrogen in the reactivity series. Less reactive metals are copper, like that is also below. More reactive metals, if I have to say high or more reactive metals, it includes zinc, sodium, iron. Right students? So now let us see, let me turn the page and check what are the reactions of the least reactive metals. Now let us see the trick what we have to remember. Okay. Now if you have to see as I said, there are three conditions, correct? Now let us write. Suppose if you have a least reactive metal, you have a least reactive metal done. You are trying to combine. So what are the least reactive metal? As I said, it is silver, gold, platinum, which are below the hydrogen reactivity series. Suppose if you are combining this with dilute HNO3, correct? If you are combining this with concentrated HNO3, Suppose if you are uh, checking both the conditions, just check here only in high reactivity metals, you just see the very dilute condition. So dilute HNO3 means it's nothing but 6 to 10 percent. Uh, 6 to 10 percent is very dilute. Dilute means 20 percent. Concentrated means, you know, like almost like uh, 60 to 70 percent concentrated. Done. Suppose if you are taking dilute HNO3, always remember the products are metal nitrates plus NO plus water. So in dilute, it is always NO. If you take concentrated HNO3, it's again metal nitrate plus NO2 plus water. So in concentrated, it is NO2. In dilute, it is NO. NO. Right. Suppose if I take less reactive metals. So less reactive metals are what? Less reactive metals are if I take copper in this series. Okay, right. So here you can also take go simply just if you further wants to want uh, to write lead also copper lead you can take. Suppose if I am adding dilute HNO3, what is the concentration? Twenty percent concentrated. Suppose here you are adding concentrated HNO3, right, students? Done. If you are taking dilute HNO3, remember the product formed is metal nitrate as usual. In all the cases, metal nitrate is compulsory. So common. So metal nitrate, same thing in dilute, you will be getting exactly NO plus water. Here concentrated also same NO2 plus water. Suppose if I take more reactive metals, more reactive metals are there. What are they? They are nothing but zinc, sodium, iron compared to them. They are above the hydrogen in the reactivity series. There are three conditions very dilute HNO3. Very dilute means how much? It's almost you know, 6 to 10 percent concentration of HNO3. Suppose if you have dilute which is 20 percent HNO3. Further you have concentrated HNO3. So what happens? Very dilute if it is there, the product formed you need to remember it is metal nitrate plus ammonium nitrate plus water. Suppose if I am taking 60, uh, 20 percent uh, HNO3 dilute, all right? Yes, dilute HNO3, the product as usual is metal nitrate. But here, remember for highly reactive in dilute, you get laughing gas, nitric oxide, or sorry, nitrous oxide, nitrous oxide plus water. 
Suppose if I'm taking concentrated conditions, the product is metal nitrate plus nitrogen dioxide plus water. So in concentrated NO2, NO2, NO2. Remember, right? So this and this is similar. Only differences in this and ammonium nitrate in very dilute conditions. This is okay, students. Yes, easy. Now let us take the, the re reaction and start writing. Suppose if I'm taking the least reactive metal. So what did I say? Least reactive metal is nothing but silver, gold like that. Well, let us see. Suppose if I'm taking silver, I'm going to add dilute HNO3. So almost how much dilute means here in this case, I'm using almost dilute 50% means less than that. So I'll be getting, what did I say? Metal nitrate. That is nothing but silver nitrate. Plus if it is dilute, what should you remember? What did I say? In dilute, it is NO. Correct? No? Plus water. So, if I have to balance this, this is 3. Uh, this also is 3. This is 4. If I have to write uh, for this 2. This is your dilute. Suppose if you are using concentrated HNO3. You are using HNO3 which is concentrated. This is concentrated. What will I get? Same metal nitrate only. But the difference is, I will be getting NO2 plus water. If I have to balance 2 here, NO3, that's fine. So, dilute, concentrated. Now, let us see the reactions of, let us see the reactions of, um, what do you say? Middle reactivity or less reactivity. So, it is not middle reactivity, less reactivity. So, let, let us write, action of... HNO3 with which one? With less reactive metals. Less reactive metals. So, less reactive metals means what? What did we say? Just now, you can either use copper. Copper is one less. Lead. They are below. Correct, no? Yes, in the reactivity series. Okay. I will be doing the mechanism as I said in the next video. Remember. Suppose if I take copper, I am using dilute HNO3 to this. I am using the same copper, I am introducing, this is dilute HNO3, this is concentrated HNO3, both. What did I say? In both the cases, it is copper nitrate only, metal nitrate. Copper nitrate, copper nitrate. But in dilute, I will be getting nitrous oxide. In concentrated, I will be getting nitrogen dioxide. Water, water. Simple students? Yes. Now we will see the action with or action of HNO3 with more concentrated, more reactive uh, uh, metals. So action of HNO3 with which one? With which one? With more reactive metals. More reactive metals. So what are the more reactive metals we have? We have zinc, sodium, iron. So what did we say? We said we can use it in three conditions. Let us check. Suppose if I am taking this in under three conditions, that is, if I take very dilute nitric acid, very dilute nitric acid means how much? It's almost 6 to 10 percent diluted, means almost uh, 90 is to 10. So, if here if I take dilute HNO3, here how much? I am going to use 20 percent nitric acid. Further, I am going to use concentrated HNO3 more than 50 percent, right? Almost 75 to tell you. What will happen in all the cases? Zinc nitrate is compulsory. Zinc nitrate is very like it's compulsory formed. What should you remember? More reactive metals with very dilute HNO3 compulsory ammonia is released in very dilute. If you take dilute N2O is released. If you take concentrated NO2 is released. Remember. Let us write the reactions now, right? So I'm going to take very dilute. I'm taking this first condition, zinc plus HNO3, that is very dilute, very dilute. What product will I get? I'm compulsory going to get zinc nitrated, that's compulsory. Along with that, ammonia is said, yes, here ammonia comes out in the form of ammonium nitrate, which further dissociates into nitrous oxide and water, that's fine. Along with this, water. Let us draw one line. Suppose if I am taking dilute HNO3, zinc plus HNO3, now this is dilute. 
This is how much? This is almost 20 percent. Here this is 6 to 7 percent. This is 6 to 10 percent. This is 20 percent. Same thing you will be getting zinc nitrate. Perfect. But what did I say? I will be getting N2O. N2O plus water. Further if I have to take with concentrated HNO3. What did I say? This is almost 70 percent. Okay. 70 percent is more no right so 70 percent zinc plus hno3 same thing again now i said it is zinc or metal nitrate metal nitrate is common so metal nitrate now here this is 70 percent so first write zinc nitrate done what is it going to give it's going to give nitrogen dioxide plus water so this is the only difference in all the three that's fine students now let us see the reaction of hno3 with non metals that's fine so let us write a reaction of nitric acid with which one with non metals with non metals so what are the different non metals let us take it zn and crt p4 i2 s8 carbon so, when you are trying to mix, we are trying to use concentrated HNO3 here. So, all are going to form acid plus NO2 because it is concentrated means compulsory NO2 is formed water. Now, let us write the reactions. Phosphorus, what is that? P4 plus HNO3 concentrated. What will I get? I said acid. What is acid? Phosphoric acid plus NO2 plus water. Let us take iodine, iodine I2 plus HNO3. I am not writing the balancing, I am just showing it to you. What acid do you get? Hydroiodic acid plus same compounds. Now, let me take further S8. Sulfur 8, if I take, it is going to give me sulfuric acid, same byproducts. If I take carbon, it is going to form carbonic acid plus NO2 plus water. Now carbonic acid is not stable. No, it's going to further break into water and carbon dioxide. Yes, students, isn't it not interesting? Is, isn't it easy? Yes. So here basically remember the reactions are very easy. Okay. Now the only thing is you need to remember where what is the trick. Now let us see two more reactions or three more reactions. Very important reactions with potassium nitrate or sodium nitrate okay now if i take potassium nitrate there are two things suppose if i take potassium nitrate and add concentrated sulfuric acid to this is one concept if i am taking same potassium nitrate and adding sulfuric acid and along with this ferrous sulfate also just check with concentrated nitric acid sorry concentrated sulfuric acid it's going to form or even you can here you can take uh, sodium NaNO3 also both the things we will write suppose I'm going in this direction right here this is going to break up as just see it's sulfuric acid I can write it as H plus and HSO4 minus correct yes now this is plus this is minus check what are the product Bro products are KH KH plus and minus SO4 plus HNO3 with NaNO3 let us write let us write NaNO3 Na plus NO3 minus Na will combine with HSO4 forming sodium bisulfate plus HNO3 simple isn't it yes students simplest reaction done suppose if you are add having sulfuric acid and ferrous sulfate so this mechanism also I'm going to show you in the next video just see what will form it's going to form potassium sulfate now ferrous will get converted to ferric this is important ferrous to ic lower oxidation state higher oxidation state plus water plus no i'm not balancing anything just showed you the skeletal reaction so this is how almost 55 reactions we have covered more than that we have covered in this video
evening students welcome to one more session of your wc that is your world of chemistry neat abhya series right you all know students i have already done the series 1 and series 2 also so hope you have shared it with other friends also so that it will be very helpful for you all today we'll be doing again that is the neat C neat abhya series 3 so basically in this i'll be discussing different different concepts of inorganic chemistry where these are the short short questions of s block elements okay so the s block both the alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals what are the short short questions and compulsory there are a lot of tricks also involved in this particular session so keep please watch it till the end and i'll be adding the tricks also which will follow after these questions yes students all the best for the exam as the dates are already declared don't worry don't panic only thing is have confidence in yourself right students so let us start off we'll read the question we'll mark the option and we'll also see what trick should i remember while solving the question yes students yes let us start off so these are the sure short questions of s block elements both the alkali metals and alkaline earth metals and it in also involves certain as i said tricks Okay, let us read the question first. So, what did they say? They said here they asked me the question, which of the following has largest size? They have given option A, sodium atom, sodium cation, sodium anion, and can't be pre predicted. So, basically, simple as that. So, we very well know cation is formed when there is loss of electron that means when the electron is lost the size automatically decreases isn't it means the number of shells one electron is lost from the outermost shell the, uh, the particular size decreases but when it is an anion formation we very well know during anion yes anion formation that means it's going to accept an electron suppose if i take sodium atomic number 11 plus 1 electron 12 isn't it so what happens there is expansion of number of shells so when there is expansion of number of cells obviously the answer is cat anion always na minus so what should i remember cations lose electrons correct and become smaller what i would do anions do anion add electrons and they become larger in size correct no accepting electron is nothing but anion so here this option let us take some more examples suppose they if they have given uh, the uh, options different options like o minus 2 is there if they say na plus is here then they say f minus is here now you only tell me which is a maximum of bigger anion o minus 2 so o minus 2 will be larger in size than f minus larger in size than na plus so this is how you need to see larger the anionic size more is its a uh, larger the size on an anionic charge more is the size okay let us come to the next one suppose they have given you a certain example like n minus 3 aluminum plus 3 mg plus 2 now you only see which one is the larger n minus 3 because it is an anion then comes magnesium then comes aluminum because it has lost three electrons more smaller than magnesium isn't it yes so the order is n minus 3 greater than magnesium plus 2 greater than aluminum plus 3 perfect okay let us see one more suppose they have asked you to find the sizes between h plus h and h minus you only tell me stu uh, students what is that anion is always larger so anion larger then comes your as normal atom because nothing is lost and the least is cation so you should remember concentrate always anion is larger in size correct no anion is larger than size then comes the atom which we have seen here and then comes the cation correct now let us come and see the next question what do we have in our next uh, in the series okay let us read this question these are short short questions students so let me push my page okay right so here in this particular question it is given ionization potential of sodium it will would be numerically same as right so they are asking numerically which will have a same um uh, ionization means which along with these they have given four options electron affinity value electronegativity electron affinity of helium or ionization potential of magnesium so basically they are asking the ionization potential of sodium will be similar means in numbers will be similar to which one okay so basically what is ionization potential it's nothing but the amount of energy required to remove an electron suppose from the outermost shell suppose if i have here there is one electron nucleus <coughs> there is one electron 
I'm applying energy and <coughs> this ionization energy and pulling out this electron. That is ionization potential. Correct? Yes. Now, when it is electron affinity, electron affinity is what? It is energy change when a neutral atom attracts an electron. That means if there is a neutral atom, when it accepts an electron and x minus and this energy whatever change is there this energy is nothing but electron affinity now just check here electron negativity is ability to attract correct no but this is metal isn't it it's here this given plus so this is not the option electron affinity of helium helium is a noble gas correct so helium it's already filled it will not attract any electrons ionization potential of magnesium magnesium is plus two state that means all the things are ruled out only thing left is electron affinity of so na plus that means option a ionization potential of sodium where we are taking out one electron perfect i electron affinity of sodium where it is accepting one electron correct no so this and this numerically will be similar okay students yes so the first option a option is correct in this case okay now let us see the next question sure short question which you have what are they asking they are asking here which of the following are found in biological fluids okay biological fluids that is in our uh, human body in the fluids which are the ions formed what are they they say sodium magnesium calcium potassium strontium lithium and barium okay right basically our fluid system biological fluid system has right students let us come and see the next question this is an important question where i have written the values already just check here what do they give first of all okay let me put this is not the option let us check which of the following are found in biological fluids and uh, like sodium magnesium calcium potassium strontium lithium and barium basically our blood for the biological fluid has both cations and anions okay so sodium the value of uh, sodium existence in a blood uh, body fluid is 136 molar equivalent per liter so potassium value is so much calcium value is so much magnesium value also is so much so basically along with the cations we also have anions present right so what what are there sodium potassium calcium magnesium chloride and bicarbonate so in this case strontium this is the wrong option in this case sodium potassium are there but calcium is not there wrong option so in the third case sodium potassium magnesium calcium this is a right option yes students so that means our biological fluids have the the presence of both the cations and anions in this ratio so the correct option is c option okay let us uh, read the next question so this is the question and this is a trick which i have written here already just check so always remember if they ask you this is the most important trick which you need to remember which of the following is not correct so among alkali metals lithium oxide is the only one metal oxide which does not decompose on heating okay what is the reason just see whenever you're thinking about hydrides or normal oxides and halides you know so always remember thermal stability is inversely related to size that means as the size increases thermal stability decreases correct no it you can easily break the bond and you can heat it and form the respective uh, respective compounds done and thermal stability is directly related to electronegativity if the electronegativity is more it tries to drag the electrons towards itself when it drags the electron towards itself it's difficult for us means with more temperature you need to break that bond and then just form the respective uh, products correct so remember these two things thermal stability is inversely related to size and thermal stability is directly related to electron negativity okay let us see one more question right let us read this question and understand what it is saying let us read this here what did they say the element of group one provide a color to the flame of the bunsen burner okay so whenever they say color of the bunsen burner that means they're talking about excitation of electrons correct no so when from the ground state they go to the excited state 
and during that time they absorb the frequency of the particular uh, the visible spectrum and impart the color now they are asking the elements of group 1 provide a color to the flame of bunsen burner due to what okay concept i understood so basically what is this low ionization potential low melting point softness presence of one electron don't get confused between these two basically an electron from the ground state it has to go to the excited state and then absorb the energy from the visible spectrum and then it starts imparting that color so for that what do we require low ionization energy if the ionization energy is low i can pull out that electron that electron will go from the ground state to the excited state so the correct option is a is the correct option correct students yes now let us see one more so basically here just check i have listed out all the orders which we have the trends which you have in the particular uh, um, group one of the alkali metals as well as alkaline earth metals so basically stability of hydrides so what you should remember whenever they give hydrides what uh, what is important down the group we very well know size increases correct right so what is happening down the group size increases when the size increases what will happen bond dissociation energy decreases correct no if the size is bigger i can apply less amount of energy to or dissociate the bond yes students yes i can yes so with less energy i can dissociate the bond and use it correct little bit i'll just zoom out the paper okay so here remember whenever we are trying to talk about order of hydrides yes students order of hydrides when we are talking i need to remember this concept size okay so size increases means bond dissociation ma'am bond dissociation is how it is so basically if i have metal hydrogen bond like this if the size is increasing i can easily remove this hydrogen correct i can easily remove this but remember stability decreases down the group always remember stability decreases down the group because it is easy for me to remember remove this so what is order lithium hydride more stable than sodium hydride more stable than potassium hydride more stable than cesium hydride yes no just now we said size is higher lesser energy i can easily remove so which is more stable lithium hydride which is less stable cesium hydride okay now ionic mobility so this is for your bond dissociation enthalpy so for ionic mobility when they were whenever they're asking remember this concept what is that S smaller the size or size decreases ionic mobility increases obviously you know when the size is small it can fastly or the mobility or movement will be very very fast isn't it so size is inversely related to your ionic mobility yes students so smaller ions they quickly run in the uh, this one field and we calculate the transference number also correct so according to this concept what is the mobility order if i have to see lithium is a very small ion isn't it aqueous will be the size is smaller mobility will be more again sodium size is smaller mobility will be more greater than potassium it is an aqueous solution then only ions are formed you know greater than rubidium greater than cesium okay greater than cesium this is perfect so remember size is smaller more ionic mobility okay yes students done right now let us see this order of reactivity towards water so basically the alkali metals all metals react vigorously with water correct no so let us write all metals all metals react vigorously vigorously with water all the metals they will react vigorously with water so how is this order means how is this reactivity it increases down the group when we go it increases when down when from when i go from top to bottom this reactivity increases down the group right so basic character so on what what is basic character depending upon remember basically what is basic character it's nothing but donation of oh minus ions correct now when something donates oh minus ion i call it as more basic so on what is this basic character depending just check remember this concept what is that as the size of cation increases as the size of cation increases what happens the internuclear distance the distance between them also increases means size increases means distance also increases so i am writing internuclear distance it also increases okay 
when it is increasing centrifugal distance increasing i can easily ionize it easily ionizable i can e i easily ionizable and i can take out the oh minus ion that means if the size of the cation is i said larger among the alkali metals which one is uh, larger yes barium hydroxide so barium hydroxide is larger in size i can easily remove this oh minus ion so this is more basic then comes strontium hydroxide why here this is more uh, larger in size cation i can easily remove this is more than calcium hydroxide compared to magnesium hydroxide that means as the size of the cation increases it's easily remove i can easily remove this oh minus and becomes more basic so remember this trick yes students now solubility order so basically for solubility whenever they are asking you solubility order in your alkali metals and uh, this one no? just check first of all very uh, what trick you should remember always remember if the if we have two things so on what the solubility depend solubility basically depends upon two factors what are they it's going to depend upon hydration enthalpy and lattice energy correct no this is these are the two factors right hydration enthalpy and lattice energy decides whether the thing uh, particular uh, so compound is soluble now compare both of them always remember if the hydration enthalpy is more and the lattice enthalpy is less then the compound is soluble so what is the concept if the hydration enthalpy is more and lattice enthalpy is less then the molecule is soluble in nature so among your alkali metals if you take the order how should you just see the order is just like this beryllium sulfate greater than magnesium sulfate greater than it goes on like that beryllium sulfate magnesium sulfate calcium sulfate then strontium sulfate then barium sulfate so order remember this is a concept here in this case for barium sulfate hydration enthalpy is more and lattice enthalpy is less that's why it easily the order is if they're going to be soluble right so here uh, here what happens is when you are talking about the solubility order just remember the concept right so what is it dissolving how it's forming suppose if i take uh, basically you know the carbonates or you know, bicarbonates the concept will little bit change because you are talking about how it is forming the bonds correct no yes students right right now let us see the next question same thing a uh, little bit what solid solubility of sulfates okay if if it is their same uh, concept of alkaline earth metals same question repeated so just see you can uh, just take i am again writing beryllium sulfate greater than magnesium sulfate same question but you know i just wrote it okay right barium sulfate that's fine okay now increasing thermal stability okay so here whenever you're talking about thermal stability basically remember of which one of group 1 and 2 carbonates okay so here carbonates when you're taking again beryllium carbonate lesser than magnesium carbonate lesser than calcium carbonate less than potassium carbonate okay right so basically if you have to talk thermal stability i told no already among the group 1 uh, metals alkali metals lithium oxide is the only compound which which we can't be thermally decomposed means using heat it i can't decompose that right right that's the thing and if it comes to Uh, the group 2 metals we have written this order right so beryllium carbonate magnesium carbonate why this is the thing when you heat or you know the carbonates what happens as we go down from top to bottom we very well know when i heat carbonate what is it going to happen it will going to decompose into metal oxide that is beryllium oxide plus carbon dioxide correct no yes so here this one when i go down the group as uh, like uh, this one what is happening to the size the size of the cation is increasing correct yes here this is most stable and this is least stable so as the size of the cation increases it it easily dissociates into carbon dioxide gas and metal oxide that's fine students okay done so this is okay but further if you still want to understand one trick we will write here what are we going to write as 
as size increases of the metal atom what will happen stability of stability of carbonate decreases this is okay i'm putting in the box remember this for the carbonate so um, if i have to say magnesium carbonate it dissociates in magnesium oxide and carbon dioxide simple okay now solubility of sulfates in which of the following the hydration enthalpy is higher than the lattice energy okay they have given me this concept here okay so here they ask me i already said wherever hydration enthalpy is more than the lattice energy that particular compound is soluble that is what we said no if the hydration enthalpy is more let us write hydration enthalpy is more than the lattice enthalpy then only the particular compound is soluble this is what we said now here when i see the sulfates remember always the trick which you should remember is high energy of solvation high energy of solvation that means basically when i take let us assume i'm taking among all these i'll mark the option if i have to take this i'll mark the option 13th option is option a let us see how i can explain okay yes so during when magnesium sulfate it when it dissolves in water so what is happening sulfur is in the center one oxygen atom here one more oxygen atom here one more oxygen here one more oxygen here now you have your magnesium plus 2 ion which is very close to the negative oxygen atom correct and all around you have hydrogen 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 in this case like this hydrogen is there isn't it one hydrogen hydrogen so water because they are dissolving in water the hydrogen bonds are all all formed around now what should you understand here what happens there is high energy of hydration means it's going to high energy of solvation in this case isn't it so what happens the magnesium ion is pulled towards the negative oxygen atom correct so what happens hydration enthalpy increases okay solubility decreases correct in which case in beryllium case but here in this case hydration enthalpy is more than lattice energy why the negative and the positive are together okay that's why in uh, it is more soluble okay let us see the next question students so little bit i'll go to the next question and use this question very important question uses is always asked i'll just zoom it little bit for you all so that it's clear okay so here they have given me match the following okay in match the following concept just check here they have given me compounds of sodium they have given me uses so nothing <laughs> simple always remember this is an you know summary of all the uh, com concept which is there in your uh, s block that is your alkali metals so just nothing to get confused sodium carbonate when i have to take it is used normally we have studied isn't it so in sodium carbonate it is always used to prepare glass soap so sodium carbonate too sodium chloride if i have to take okay right sodium chloride it is used to prepare it forms a basic uh, component of preparation of caustic soda sodium carbonate right no sodium chloride now when i take sodium hydroxide in i am caustic soda we use it for petroleum refining correct so sodium bicarbonate as a fire extinguisher because carbon dioxide is there so i'll be using as a fire extinguisher right so among all this a2 b3 c c4 and d so the option 1 is correct in this case yes students simple all the uses are summarized in this form now let us see the next question okay this question let me move the page okay so let us read this question this is clear i think okay so what is this question let us read right so here in this question they asked me match the following with the color imparted in the oxidizing film so here they have given the options they have given the elements on this side they have given the color nothing remember so here cesium the color of cesium because color question compulsory they will ask you isn't it yes color question they will ask you so she uh, cesium when i see the correct option of cesium is it is blue in color cesium is blue so rubidium rubidium is red violet okay potassium is c potassium is violet in color your sodium is yellow in color 
lithium if if you have to take it is also violet in color so the correct option is a option which is there so these are the colors which are shown in the oxidizing flame okay now let us see next question uh, of your s block right let us read this here they have given uh, which of the following statements is true or false okay true and false not or true and false right so here in the given statements now let us read the alkali metal hydroxides are strongest of all bases okay so correct no uh, what did we say smaller the size of the cation correct on when we go down from top to bottom size is increasing means i can pull out the high oh minus easily so this option is correct next all the bases all the alkali metal halides have higher negative enthalpies of formation this statement also is right isn't it negative enthalpies of formation because when you are uh, trying to take out because the size of the particular cation is very very smaller when i am trying to take out it's they have very high values isn't it it's very difficult for me to pull out the uh, this one uh, alkali metal halides right so next thing stability of carbonates and bicarbonates of metal Uh, decreases with increase in electropositive character. No, no, no. This is wrong, isn't it? Yes. What did we say? They are met metal uh, stability of carbonate and bicarbonate of metal decreases, right? With increase in electropositive character. So electropositive character. If I have to say, metals are the ability to uh, donate the ele uh, electrons. Correct? No. Yes. Right. So when from left to right, the electropositive character it. decreases and on the right extreme means on the uh, completely group 17 all these are highly electronegative okay now the said stability of carbonate and bicarbonate metals are uh, decreases with increase in electropositive character but first of all here metals only they donate correct no of carbonates this is a false statement okay now only lithium bicarbonate exist as solid this is also a false statement what, what is the thing students tell me among group 1 what are the uh, physical states of your uh, um, group 1 metals you have basically when i see the physical states smaller the size correct no the smaller the size of those particular uh, things uh, if i see the density of uh, this one uh, what do you say like uh, uh, lithium or if i have to see the density of lithium sodium okay uh, potassium rubidium so normally when i see their uh, properties okay as a size as a size is increasing so he they said lithium bicarbonate only is solid not like that isn't it so they they are uh, so uh, this one remaining also as solids because of their smaller sizes okay so the correct option is this one now let us take one more remember this this is very important i have written here for you all so the topic is atomic and ionic radii of alkaline earth metals are smaller correct understood then those of corresponding alkali metals in the same period why because the electron keeps adding to the same shell this is fine second ionization energy of alkaline earth metals are smaller than those of corresponding metals of group 1 correct because when i have to take out one electron uh, the from the uh, particular one minus 1 because uh, group 1 group 1 elements the configuration is only minus 1 so second ionization energy will be smaller only corresponding metals because already one is there i have to take out that electron okay next compounds of alkaline earth metals are more extensively hydrated than those of alkali metals so these are the three important points which you have to remember right so apart from these short short questions let us take or let us uh, see one more important or the concept which you should uh, remember in inorganic chemistry let us write those so what is the next concept let us let me turn the page just remember greater the charge on the cation more is its covalent character remember this what is this greater the charge on cation more is its more is its covalent character Co more is its covalent character so how can i prove this basically when you take beryllium okay chloride greater than lithium 
chloride greater than any cl so in covalent character when i see we say greater the charge beryllium is plus 2 charge so more this is more covalent correct no yes so greater the charge on the cation more is its covalent character so cation charge is plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 done okay now let us take in terms of ionic sizes so here always remember order of ionic size when i take okay so normally you know you know i think no as the size increases to from top to bottom okay so the cationic size how will you write suppose potassium calcium magnesium are there you can see the atomic number and write the sizes isn't it that's easy okay so that is one concept um, based on the atomic number you can write that right now suppose as a charge on the cation increases so what will happen the uh, well, Z effective increases. So, atomic size decreases. That is one concept which you have to remember. Next, among if you have to see the isoelectronic species, we which you have so same number of electrons, you know, among isoelectronic species. So, which have same number of electrons. What will happen? The ionic radii increases. Correct? No? So, ionic radii increases when it increases, whenever it increases whenever negative charge increases ionic radius increases whenever negative charge increases let me take one example okay why this negative charge increase what will happen when the negative charge increases the z effective means the distance between or the force of attraction in the nucleus nuclear force of attraction it decreases correct no yes so right let us see the question students now they are asking you find among the following find among the following okay among the following which are which are isoelectronic and isostructural which are isoelectronic and isostructural isostructural that means simple let us take one some one example two one or two examples and see so here they have given sets first set is what co3 minus 2 and no3 minus one more set they have given is ClO3 minus and SO3 minus 2. One more set which they have given is ClO3 minus and CO3 minus 2. Now let's see. Here, first of all, how to calculate isoelectronic? First, calculate the number of electrons. In carbonate, count the number here carbon, atomic number 6. Here, oxygen 8, 8, no, atomic number 8, 3 is a 24 electrons are there plus extra 2. So, how much it has come to 32? Okay, now NO3 minus we will calculate. So, in NO3 minus, atomic number of nitrogen is 7, oxygen is 8, 8, 3 is a 24 plus 1. So, how total how many electrons? 32. So, both are isoelectronic in nature. So, here CO2 is sp2 hybridized. Because 3 plus 1, 4 bonds are there. Here, uh, 3 bonds are there. Sp2 means 2, uh, 2 plus 1, 3 bonds are there. This is also Sp2. Now, both are isoelectronic. If it is Sp2, what is the type of uh, uh, shape? Triagonal planar. So, this is triagonal planar. Done. Let us calculate for this. ClO3, atomic number of chlorine is 17. Oxygen is 8, 3 is 24 plus 1. How many electrons? 42 electrons. If I take SO3 minus, sulfur is 16. Number of electrons, A3 is a 24. Correct, no? Yes, 24. And how many are there? Plus 2. So, total 42 electrons. So, this is also, this is what? 42, 42, both are isostructural only. So, uh, sorry, isoelectronic, same number of electrons. Okay, this is also isoelectronic. Correct? Now, if this is... Uh, ClO3, what is the hybridization? 3 plus 1, 4 are there, no? So, sp3 hybridization. This is also sp3. Triagonal pyramidal. The shape is triagonal. Uh, this one, uh, planar. This is triagonal pyramidal. Let us see this. ClO3 and your CO3 uh, minus. Okay. So, here ClO3, 17 plus A3 is a 24 plus 1. 42 electrons for this okay for carbonate let us check 6 plus oxygen is 24 plus 2 32 electrons so check here this is sp3 hybridization 
this is sp2 hybridization so both are different so this is the thing which is not isoelectronic because it doesn't have similar electrons and not isostructural both are different why sp3 hybridization means it is trigonal pyramidal sp2 means it is trigonal planar that's why so this is from my side students so thank you so much for watching i'll come up again with more questions these are the sure short questions which you have to study don't skip them please share it with your friends thank you for watching and i'll come back with one more important set of questions for your neat examination this journey continues till your neat examination all the best students